we decided to design a catering company that sells sub sandwiches. We wanted to find the cheapest way to cater an event. Our goal was to ultimately find an equation that the company could use to find the most efficient way to determine the amount of each item to purchase each week. We decided to set some parameters and restrictions. First, we determined the serving size of each item. For example, one pound of lunch meat would serve four people. As you can see in the chart, we determined the serving size for all of the items. One pound of cheese would serve eight people. Two feet of bread would serve four people. One bag of lettuce would serve eight people. One pound of tomatoes would serve 20 people. Eight ounces of mayonnaise would serve 40 people. And eight ounces of mustard would serve 40 people. In addition to this, each person would also need a plate, napkin, and so forth. Next, we decided we would only cater once a week on Saturdays to parties of 100 people. Then we set expiration dates for all the food. We created a chart that would show the expiration dates with each item. Bread, lunch meat, cheese, and lettuce would last two weekends. Mayonnaise and mustard would last 12 weekends. And plates, napkins, and silverware would last forever. Our next step would be to create our equation. We decided to define specific variables as follows. N would be the number of people, S the serving size, W weekends the serving would last, P the size to purchase, L beginning would be the beginning leftovers, L new would be the new leftover amount which becomes the new L. During the next phase of our project we decided to manage our work with Microsoft Excel. We agreed that the best way to present our data would be to generate tables showing the cost per unit for each of our ingredients. For the next step of our project, we created two panel graphs showing the cost per unit of each ingredient. We noticed that the price per unit was reduced when bought in bulk. The emphasis of this phase of our project was used to show the amount of money our company would save by buying in bulk. We decided we would find the pricing for buying in bulk. So we came up with sizing and pricing and then found the price per unit by dividing the prices divided by the size. Then I graphed the sizing and the pricing to show that the price increases as the size increases. Then we graphed the price per unit to show that the price per unit is decreasing at a decreasing rate that eventually levels off. Meaning that the price per unit is eventually the same as you buy in bulk, which you can see more clearly in our table. We divided the number of people by the serving size per unit, took that number and multiplied it by the number of weekends it lasts. Our answer for that gave us the amount we needed to purchase. From there we decided we would need to take the lower bound of this number so we would not over purchase. Then we would take that number and subtract the number of people divided by the serving size to get the leftovers that week. Once we tried this equation by plugging in different numbers, we realized we needed to incorporate the leftovers week by week. We decided that the easiest way to do this would be to subtract the leftovers from our first equation because at first we would just set it equal to zero. After working with this for a while, we decided we needed to combine three equations to find our answer. The output of the first would be the input of the second, and the same with the third. From there, we felt in that in order to make this a realistic to use in a real life situation, Excel would be the most proficient. It is easily accessible and user friendly. After doing both of these types of explorations, we wanted to go even, even further. We, wanted to, we wondered what would happen if the number of people we were serving each week were to change. So right away we decided why not just throw bigger numbers into the, um, into the tables that we already had. When doing this, we had this problem. The problem was that the units purchased worked when the numbers were higher, but the leftover amount we gave us when the number of people was lower ended up being we had enough leftovers to feed those people. When the amount of leftovers were more, were more than necessary to feed the number of people for the next week, the program couldn't handle it. From that point, we knew that we had to figure out a way to show that if we already had enough leftovers to feed for the next week, to not purchase anything. From that point on, we went and did a range of different numbers of people per week. We input our serving size and weekends just as we did earlier. From that point we got our maximum purchases 
and kept doing the same thing with our leftovers. At that point we knew that our maximum purchase needed to be changed in order to also get our units of purchase to be changed. From that point on, we put an if statement within our program that allowed the program to realize that if the number of leftovers that you had times the serving size was more than the number of people you have, the number would be inputted as zero. From that point on, it would tell you to purchase none for that upcoming week, but you would have plenty to serve the, follow the next week, and then it would go back to telling you how many units you need to continue to purchase.